Brum of the Wisconsin Technology Council with WISBusiness.com, the show, brought to you by Grant Thornton. Coming up on the show, Tom Still in his commentary examines whether a public option insurance plan will be the right option for Wisconsin businesses and workers. And Madison's Tony Sykes talks to us about Wisconsin's investment climate for entrepreneurs. Plus, in the WISBusiness.com stock report, an order from Down Under gives a Wisconsin truck manufacturer a boost. We'll be right back. What has made Grant Thornton one of the largest accounting organizations in the world, with resources in more than 100 countries worldwide? Is it their global capabilities, or is it their passion for how they serve their clients? Grant Thornton. In the WISBusiness.com stock report, Oshkosh Corporation is rising. The Oshkosh truck manufacturer wins two more Army contracts valued at more than $400 million. The company also bids on a project to supply over 1,000 lightweight military vehicles to Australia. Mixed. Wisconsin's employment picture. September's jobless rate was 7.7%, dropping for the fourth straight month. But a top state economist says the state won't regain the thousands of jobs it has lost until at least 2012. And while local unemployment numbers for last month show the jobless rate dropped in 71 of 72 counties, the local rates in every county are still worse than they were a year ago. And falling. Bank of Elmwood in Racine has been closed by regulators, the first bank failure in Wisconsin since the recession began. Its five branches have since reopened as branches of Tri-City National Bank. The closing was among a nationwide cascade of bank failures that now tops 100. And now, here's Tom Still with his Inside Wisconsin commentary. For reasons that would take an actuary and a congressional historian to explain, Wisconsin gets the short end of the stick when it comes to Medicare. Wisconsin is what the experts call a donor state when it comes to Medicare. In other words, health care providers here are paid less, about 15% on average, than their counterparts elsewhere. Wisconsin is among the bottom 10 states in Medicare payments, even though it always ranks among the top two or three states in quality of care. Now that some version of federal health care reform is edging closer to a vote, Wisconsin's health care stick could get even shorter. Health care reform without Medicare reform is likely to cost Wisconsin taxpayers billions of dollars over time. That's because the public option government-run health insurance plan preferred by many members of Congress would force Wisconsin to subsidize the health care sins of other states. The reason is simple. If some form of Medicare becomes the public option alternative to private insurance plans, Wisconsin providers would again be underpaid, and not just for their elderly patients. So why do the rest of us care if hospitals, nursing homes, and doctors in Wisconsin aren't fully reimbursed for Medicare services? Well, those costs don't go away, and they're mostly passed on to individual consumers and companies that provide health care coverage for their employees. Wisconsin could be penalized in another way by the wrong public option plan. Wisconsin has one of the smallest percentages of uninsured citizens. If everyone nationally is taxed equally to pay for the uninsured, Wisconsin citizens and businesses will be taxed to pay for the uninsured in California, Texas, and elsewhere. Wisconsin's congressional delegation should demand that any public option plan doesn't lock in Medicare inequities or penalize the state for its higher quality of care and coverage rates. After all, health care reform that taxes Wisconsin more to pay for care and coverage gaps elsewhere isn't really reform, is it? Thanks, Tom. I'm back with Tony Sykes, founder of The Guild and TheGuild.com, the nation's largest online arts retailer, and now a senior advisor with Grupo Levy & Company, a New York-based investment house. Tony, you've raised over $50 million for your companies in good times and bad. What advice would you give these early-stage companies trying to raise money during a recession? You know, Liz, it is a very, very difficult thing to do right now to raise capital for our startup companies because investors are so risk averse. Therefore, when I talk with CEOs of startup companies, I suggest that they, as clearly as possible, articulate the value proposition for their prospective investors. By that, I mean talk with them about uh, how long it will take you to get to 10 million, 20 million, 50 million, at what point do you believe you might be able to sell the company, who are some potential acquirers of your company. That way you can give them a vision of how they might expect at some point in time to see a return on their investment. 
In your new role at Grupo Levy, you examine a lot of early stage investment opportunities. What are the top qualities you're looking for in such companies? Liz, all investors are looking for that next big idea, something so new and so exciting that we will understand, wow, we need this product, we need this service. But behind the big idea, it's very important to have the skills and the experiences to execute on the plan. And that's where a huge plus on the right side of the column is an experienced CEO or members of the management team who have experience in taking a company from small to much larger or perhaps industry experience in, in the new area that this company is working in. So I would say combining a big idea with the skills and experience to execute and grow a company are the key things that investors look for. As you know, Wisconsin does not have many venture capital firms, but it does have about two dozen angel networks. What's the next step for Wisconsin in terms of building that supply of early stage capital? I think it's very important that we recognize that this angel network we have in Wisconsin is a national role model and provides critical early stage financing to new companies. However, we need to add that second level of financing for companies once they reach a certain stage and that's what venture capital does. And we lack in venture capital here in Wisconsin. So what can we do about it? We can help grow some more venture capital companies. We have a very small number at this point. We need more venture capital companies and we need to encourage institutional investors, governmental investors, and private investors to invest in those venture capital funds. We also should be doing whatever we can to attract venture capital from the East and the West Coast to come to Wisconsin and invest in some of the exciting companies we have here. Thanks, Tony, and thank you for watching this edition of WISBusiness.com, the show. Produced by WISBusiness.com and the Wisconsin Technology Council and sponsored by Grant Thornton. Please visit our websites to read and learn more. I'm Liz Shrum. See you next time.